Breaking news, everybody. The government is shut down. We're all going to die. The asteroid's going to fall. That's a real article that actually happened. The zombie apocalypse is upon us, folks. Um, Trump, it's all your fault. Um, you're going out of here. Sorry, you're done. This is the Stadium this Podcast, episode 15, recording live from Megalodon Studios. Yet again. Yet again. I'm your host, as always, Jacob Standridge. You can follow me on Twitter at jstandridge underscore. My co-host is... At Joe Stanberg on the Twitter. The tweet. And your name is... Joseph Standridge. That's but, right. You know, whatever. This is the Standing Brothers podcast. We are brothers. We are? It's actually a thing. <laughs> so as you guys know, the, the breaking news today is the government is shut down. Um, closed for business, if you will. Um, after hours. Good. Is it? It's the weekend for the, for the government. Even though it's a Monday afternoon? As as of recording this right now, this is a, this is January twenty second of this recording. So some things may have changed, some things may have not changed. But we're gonna go off of what. Oh wait, wait, wait! I got some breaking news here. Um, a bill just passed the Senate, and they have the votes to pass the House for a, uh, a a continuing resolution for the next seventeen days. So the government is back open. Breaking news, everybody! The government is back open. Unfortunately. This is kind of actually funny because we recorded this show. We recorded the entire show yesterday. Um, yesterday and um, turned to find out um, Joe's microphone wasn't on the whole time. So we, we had, had to some, uh, technical re-re- difficulties. Yeah. So we had to, so we had to re-record this show. Um, but we're going to say screw it and we're going to do it all, um, over, do again. It all over again. So um, it's still an important topic to talk about. Um, the government who caused... Wait, I want to say more. That's just how much we care about you. Exactly. We're willing to do this twice. That's how much we care about you. All you don't see that many other all, times. All two of you. <laughs> all two of you guys. <laughs> all right. So we're gonna get right into the government shutdown that happened. It's over now, but we're gonna get into how it happened, why, why it, happened. it happened, stuff like that. So <clears throat> let's get right into it. So who is to blame for this government shutdown? Is it Trump? Is it some? Is it the dinosaurs? Is it? This schmuck, I, I don't really know, but we're gonna we're gonna get into that. So, who who caused the government shutdown? What was the whole the whole deal with that? Well, what happened was is of course the government has has to be funded, as we all know, it takes money, taxes, a theft, lot, a lot of money. a lot of money, um, and apparently they ran out of it. They didn't have a budget for it, so they had to cause a shutdown. So what caused that? Well, Republicans, as you know, were in control of the House and Senate and the presidency. Um, they're they they're leading in the Senate, and they have to pass they have to pass pass a budget. So what happened was is um, Trump and the Republicans wanted to fund a lot of the immigration overhaul, so the wall, more more border security and stuff like that. Well, uh, Chuck Schumer and the Democrats were not about to do any, any of, of that. Them. So they basically said uh, no the first time the Republicans did that. Said we're not going to fund a wall. We're not going to fund any any sort of stuff like that. They came back. They said, "Okay, we'll leave it off the table, and we'll just focus on funding the government and extending stuff like CHIP, which is the child um, health care program." Yeah, which the, the funny thing is that both sides want. Yes, <laughs> and and the the the, uh, the so called bill that they passed that extends CHIP uh, insurance for the next six years. Yeah, exactly. So it's something it's something that both that 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 both sides want and they still still can't find a deal. So the Republicans came back for a third time and said, "Okay, we'll leave that all off the table. Let's just get the government funded." And it was coming to the point whenever uh, Mitch McConnell, the leader of the Republicans, um, tried to um, fund the government with only 50 votes, but he couldn't break the 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 um the um di- the um um. The barrier, if you will. Yeah, yeah. The um, um, he didn't have he didn't have enough votes to pass. Yeah, the filibuster they the had. Fil- yeah, the filibuster. Yeah. So, so if you watch CNN or if you watched in the past couple of days or the fake news media, um, who who are you hearing almost unanimously as is this fault? It's Trump's fault. It's the Republicans' fault. The government they're in charge, so obviously it's their fault. The government shut down. Well, when you really get into the facts and the details, the Republicans came three times, and they slowly stepped back their agenda. But Schumer and the Democrats were not going to take anything short of a complete 180 on what they wanted and a complete conforming to their agenda. And I, I understand there's some, there's some differences that we have on this, but um, I think this is a kudos to the Republicans for sticking to their guns 
and allowing it to shut down, saying, you know what, I'd rather it shut down than, than fall in line with you. We're in control. We're going to take care of this. Uh, that's, that's one way to look at it. I see it a little bit differently. Um, Republicans have had control of the House and Senate and the White House for over a year now. And why in this time have they not been able to pass a budget, an actual budget? Yeah, I agree with that. I don't understand that. And I think both sides are to blame on this one. Uh, the Democrats, uh, they just want you know their DACA to be funded, which I think both sides really want. They don't want DACA to go away. Nope. I think over 80% of the country supports allowing uh, the people in DACA to become citizens. So that's really kind of a losing issue, if you will, for the yeah. Republicans. So none of them are really concerned really about um you know being fiscal responsible they they the republicans will will play will you know will play to their base on that one because you know i guess that's what they do and and the democrats are they're no better they're always terrible yeah um (laughs) so i think i think both sides are bad they they're both using this DACA issue as some kind of football uh that this is some kind of game for them when really these are human beings that we're Mm -hmm. talking about so i think both sides are to blame now they passed uh, a bill for 17 days to funding the government. This is a political win for the Republicans. I think it's safe to say, but it's not a win for people who are concerned about the growth of government, the size of the state, how much mm-hmm. money they spend, because Republicans uh, are not concerned at all. They want to blow up the Pentagon budget. They want. They think it's there's no problem with the Pentagon spending you know 700 billion dollars a year. They're not. They they. I just saw uh, something earlier that um, the, a leak of the uh, the trillion dollar infrastructure program. We don't have any money to, for that. Mm-hmm. The, the 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 wall that Trump wants to build. We don't have the money for that. We are bankrupt as a country, and yet nobody in Washington seems to care. And that kind of goes further to my point that but Joe, you got to help the, the you got to help the the uh, the uh, poor people, Joe. The children. Yeah. The children. People are the children. No, but seriously, um, nobody in Washington cares about you. Nobody's really concerned about uh, limiting uh, this monstrosity that we've created. So I, I don't like to be, you know, I don't like to be pessimistic like that, but it's the truth. Oh, yeah. So. Absolutely. All right. Do you have any information on the the ending of the madness, folks? The zombie apocalypse is now over. You guys can go outside. It's, uh, well, it's, well, it's dark here, but it's probably sunny where you guys are at. So the sun came up and... The the war is over. Now, something funny. There was an actual article that I read that claimed that the government shutdown could cause a asteroid because... You know, that's actually funny you say that. Because NASA was not being funded. You know, it's funny actually you say that because uh, this bill is set to expire uh, Jan- or February 8th. And the, that asteroid that they're talking about is supposed to uh, pass the Earth on February 7th, I believe. <sighs> So if the government shuts down February 9th, who cares? We'll all be dead by then, you know? No, that was an actual article. Yeah. Somebody actually seriously wrote that the government shutdown may cause an asteroid to hit the Earth because we're not monitoring the skies. You know, for it's asteroids. not like NASA's smart enough to have, you know, a computer system that automatically does this. Well, it's also not even the not even the fact that even if we saw it coming, what do you do to stop it? Are you going to Armageddon it? It's, that's how that's a it's movie. Kinda like, it's kind of like the point they're making is that, yeah, there's this asteroid, but because the government shut down, we're just going to ignore it. You know? Exactly. What <laughs> asteroid? What? It's stupid. It's a real article. I know. So the asteroid could come, but now that the government's back open, everything is back to normal. We're saved. So you said it's gonna, the, the bill will, will, will extend a government to the 8th. Yeah, February 8th. Um, that's like 16 days. That's, yeah, it's actually it's like 17 days. So there could be another <laughs> shutdown because uh, Mitch McConnell, which who I don't believe anything that comes out of his mouth. Uh, Bipartisanship. Yeah. Uh, but he said that, they, that he promised a debate on DACA, uh, immigration <coughs> reform debate. Who, who, that guy right there. Yeah, that, that, that guy in the middle, he promised uh, that guy to the right there that they would have a debate. The Abel Akbar. That, that guy's just an idiot anyway. But they promised some kind of debate. So... Um, the Democrats might have some leverage then. Republicans may not have the leverage. Who knows? Because uh, nobody really wants to get rid of DACA. Uh, and, and Trump yeah. has taken pretty much every position you can on that issue. So uh, I think it's one of those issues where it's a, it's a losing issue for if you fight against it. Yeah. I think it's just, it's yeah. just what it is. So uh, who knows what's going to happen? Um, it, it, we'll probably have another shutdown two weeks from now. Yeah. Um, and you know what? 
I think it's okay to have some shutdowns every now and then. I think I think you know it lets people know that these non-essential uh, employees are really not essential. Uh, <laughs> it's funny how we said that together, but um, yeah. So uh, politically, it's a win for the Republicans. Um, that could be a very short victory come two weeks from now. But really, uh, no one is uh, trying to limit government at all. So mm-hmm. it's not a win for everybody else. Paul so, Ryan, the two first names. Paul Ryan, yeah. You know, you know, he voted for TARP. And yet he's the he's supposedly the uh, conservative victor. We're supposed to, you know, that's the way he was pitched to us, you know, back when in the Tea Party movement. Moving on. Moving on. Okay. Uh, so. There was a little uh, event that happened over the weekend. Is that right? Over the weekend, I believe. Uh, I think you'd say that. Over the weekend, yeah. Um, it was a march for life. It was this big pro-life march that happened on Washington. Hundreds of thousands of people showed up. It was very good. And I, I, I got to give him credit where credit is due. Absolutely. Um, Donald Trump, the first sitting president to ever acknowledge and speak at the March of Life. And um, from all accounts that I heard, it was an excellent speech. Mm-hmm. Yep, he. Uh, other presidents have uh, phoned in or written something. He was the first one to actually address the crowd, not in person, but through a satellite, because he was still at the White House. But yeah. that's fine. But I think it was. I think it was great that he invited people to the White House. Yeah, was, he had yeah. there at the White House. The, the optics good. were good. If you're looking at the people on the stage, they had all kinds, all types of people. Um, uh, I agree with everything that he basically everything he said. Uh, in that speech, it's only you can go listen to it. it's like nine or ten minutes. It's, it's, not, very it's not very long, but it's it's, yep. it's jam packed. It's well good. Yep. And I think that this is gonna help um, strengthen his base. I think this is exactly what he needs to be doing. Yep. Stuff like this. Yep. Um, but <clears throat> touching on the march of life, um, the day after there was um, there was another type of march that happened across the country. It was the it was the women's march, uh, the march marching for rights they already have. So basically, it's just exercise. There was this funny meme that I saw. It was, um, or I think that's a tweet. Um, it was that Trump has got more people outside exercising than Michelle Obama did in all of her eight years. That's good. Think about that's it. Good. Hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people went out and they marched. All over. To protest Trump. If that is not the greatest exercise health campaign, then I don't know what is. Michelle Obama couldn't get a million people to go outside and walk around. But Trump did. Yep. So uh, kudos to that, Donald. Um, well done. Um, as far as the women's march, um, my comments on it, it's a completely useless march that has no place anywhere. I mean, you're free to protest. I'm all for that. But as far as a standpoint of um, the mainstream media giving it wall-to-wall coverage, I think that is completely idiotic and stupid. I think the march is, itself is stupid. Mm-hmm. And um, I think last year the march was led by Linda Sassour. Sotomayor? Um, no, no, no. Linda Sarsour, she's a... Oh, the, okay, that, yeah. Yeah, okay, she's like yeah. that Muslim yeah. lady. Um, connected to terrorism. That's not good. Um, she was the leader and the coordinator of the march. Um, this year, I think it was different, but still. Um, what, what what rights are you yeah. marching for exactly? It's, it's a solution in search of a problem, really. Yeah, it, it is. And if you want to march in protest of Trump, fine, but don't call it the Women's March, because it, it I mean, men don't like Trump as well. It's kind of... It's kind of sexist, to be honest. It goes both ways. Um, yeah, it's just stupid. It's just stupid. I, I, I it, it's not, it's, it's not that the women's march, in my opinion, is like useless because, um, it is useless actually. It is completely a waste of time. Um, if there was genuine injustice in America, which there's not, there's genuine sexism, and, um. We didn't have equal rights. I would say, sure, go for it. But in America, you have equal rights. If you don't believe me, um, comment below on a, on a fundamental right protected by law that men have that women do not. Exactly. <laughs> good luck. Good, good luck finding one. And don't say paying for your birth control or paying for your abortion. That's not a right. That's a service. You don't have the right to that. You're, st- you're stealing money <laughs> from taxpayers to pay somebody else for a service they had to go and learn how to perform. That's not a right. Sorry, it's a, it's a product that is a commodity, it is a service. Um, Women's March, stupid, Joe? Absolutely. Stupid. Yep. But good exercise. So All about the exercise. All the exercise. I, I, All right. I, there was actually – um, it was funny because um, – 
um, I was watching Facebook Live during the Women's March and Infowars. I know you don't like Infowars, but I, I follow them and just because they just see this that they post. It's just interesting and humor, it's humorous. Sometimes it's funny. It's just humorous what they post. But yeah. they had, um, they had they had one of the reporters out there, and he was just asking questions, and they were yelling at him and telling him to go f you and give him the middle finger. Well, maybe if did he have the little Infowars thing on the microphone? Yeah, but not everybody knows who the Infowars is. I mean, it, it's it's kind of a it's 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 well known, but not everybody knows who Infowars well, is. Well, I mean, but still, like everybody he was, knows everybody knows who Alex Jones is. He was just out. He was just out there saying, "Hey, why are you marching? Hey, what rights do you think that men have that women don't? Hey, why don't you like Donald Trump? Name me one thing Donald Trump has that is, has done or said that is sexist, racism, fill in the blank, some kind of ism or phobia or whatever." And he was just met with this one lady. Um, he asked him. He asked her a question, and she just said "f you." And he's like, "Wow, my mind has changed. <laughs> you have formed an opinion so great that you've so changed persuasive. my mind with two words." <laughs> um, yeah, women's march, stupid. Um, if you want some exercise, go to the gym. That's yeah. my final statement on that. Nothing else to say on that. Okay. All right, Trump and the NSA. Go, Joe. Okay. Uh, so we had some good news. And we got some bad news. Um, so uh, on Thursday, President Trump signed um, the FISA 702 bill, which is the part of the. I believe the Patriot Act. It sounds like it. That allows um, <coughs> the government to spy on you without a warrant. It's a, in a way, a general warrant where they can just access your computers, your smartphones, whatever, and look and see what you've been doing. Isn't that unconstitutional? Very much so. Uh, the Fourth Amendment is very, it's pretty much now null and void. It doesn't really mean anything. So we'll get into that later. Yes. Um, uh, that's all on that one. Uh, that's not good. Uh, now I saw this one earlier today. Is that um, Trump is putting up a tariff on um, solar panel imports, so parts that go in to make solar panels. Why? Uh, well, the thought is behind these tariffs, which are stupid, is that it will help protect uh, f uh, domestic producers. Um, that'll help them, you know, because of of un so called unfair uh, foreign competition. So by putting a tariff, which is a tax, on these imports will help out the domestic producers, which is, uh, which is ridiculous because, yes, it might help that company who, who say they're you know, having to compete unfairly with China or wherever. Well, what about the consumer? Because the consumer has to pay that tax. Mm -hmm. um, so that's just, it's just more evidence of uh, big business and government uh, colluding with one another. It's the worst it, thing known to man. It's a good example of, of a tariff or just, just any tax in general on a big company is think about sales tax. Does the company eat that? That's exactly what it is. It's a sales Think about tax. it. Whenever you go to buy something, you have sales tax, right? Now, of course, the government taxes every sale depending on, I think in Georgia, it's like 7%. I think in yeah. Florida, it's like 6%. Different states is different percents. I think California is like close to eleven or ten percent. That's crazy. It's crazy. New York is is, is bad. New as York well. is pretty bad too. But think 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 about it like this: if there's a tax on every 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 good sold, um, you you pay that. The gov the the business is not going to eat that cost. The Absolutely same thing not. with the with an increase on their on the business income tax or any kind of tariff. Um, the 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 company is not going to eat that. You're going to have to pay yep. that. So any kind of solar panel from a foreign business, how, however much they're going to tariff, they're yep. going to say, you know what? We're not going to cut into our profits. We're going to make you guys pay more because we can't survive that right. type of tax. And uh, one of these technology companies estimated that the tariff would cost up to 88,000 jobs, which is absolutely ridiculous. Now, uh, there's a good piece at the Cato Institute talking about the uh, the horrors of protectionism. I, you can go read that. It's like 20 pages. It's pretty good. But um, uh, there... It's also um, there. Trump, <coughs> late last year, Trump uh, put up another tariff, a three hundred percent tariff, on the C series uh, jets produced by the Canadian airspace company. They make airplanes, uh, which was supposed to help protect the uh, Boeing company. Um, I because, love Boeing. Because, they make great planes. Okay? Because Boeing complains that they're having to compete, that they're having to actually, you know, engage in competition <coughs> with uh, someone from Canada. So, yes, so now uh, airplanes will cost 300% more. Joseph, do you know what you, wait, do you know I know, what it's the is? world's smallest it's violin. the world's smallest yes. violin. I, I just, Boeing, I, I know, it's hard. You gotta, yeah. It's called competition. That's what happens when you have in a free market society. Look at it. Yep. Look at it. Yep. 
So uh, I, I really don't have any respect for people uh, that complain to government to get a, a handout because that's what that's really what this is is, that, cor- that's, is that's, corporate that's, that's welfare. Did. And I really don't have any. Res- well, isn't that funny? I, I don't have any respect for people that actually apply the so-called protection. Isn't that funny? Also, on how Trump's got to get a new Air Force One from Boeing. I, it's, that's, <laughs> that's just the stupidest thing. It's ridiculous. Okay, uh, next one. Uh, for a little foreign policy. Um, the awful, evil Rex Tillerson decided that. Oh, um, uh, he's not evil. Well, just wait. <laughs> uh, he decided that uh, in a speech that he gave at uh, the Stanford University that um, that Assad must go. Okay, maybe he is evil. Yeah, this is the same foreign policy as Hillary Clinton back in 2013, 2014. And we saw how well that ended up. Yeah, they decided that okay. Assad must go because he's so bad and so evil. Well, do you think he? Re- do you think he, seriously? Do you think he really is all they say he is? Do you think? I really don't think so because I think there's a lot of propaganda that comes out of mm-hmm. uh, the Pentagon and all that kind of stuff. Because really, uh, Syria, uh, before we start messing around, was a stable country. Yeah. So was Iraq. It was. It wasn't good, but it was stable. Well, I mean, it was still probably a, a second world country at that point. Yeah, it, but it, at least it was yeah. stable. There was there really there was, wasn't there, there wasn't a rampant terrorism. No, there wasn't. Uh, the, there, was a, there was a good video I watched, and it was. I mean, you could you could label under under, under conspiracy, but I don't think it is. I think it was Stefan Molyneux had a great video right after the supposed gas attacks that happened oh, yeah. last mm-hmm. year. And how they said it was a false flag. It makes it makes no political sense for Assad to, to gas his own people. Yeah. Um, I really don't know where I stand because there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of evidence on both sides of of was it a false flag? Did it actually happen? Uh, and, and that's what's kind of that's what really spearheaded this this push towards a a a um, change in um, government. Well, there a little more restrained foreign policy because because yeah. the thing is, no matter who you vote for for president, you always end up with John McCain. That's just the way it is when it comes to foreign policy. Now, to the Assad point, yes, uh, it made no sense for Assad to gas his own people. Yeah. Politically, because economically, because it didn't make any the sense. The guy had been winning the war against ISIS, so mm-hmm. why all of a sudden would he do something to uh, cause more intervention in his part of the world? That doesn't make any sense. Well, and they also went into the point that, that, that there were professional news cameras um, – Right, right away. Mm-hmm. Like, 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 you don't, you, you don't, you don't get that. Professional news crews were pretty much there minutes after the yeah. gas attacks fell. There were ambulances right after the gas attacks fell. Um, there were photographs of some of the jets, and they didn't match in any of any of the Syrian jets, and the bombs didn't were yeah. made by Syrian stuff like that. There's and, a lot of evidence that points to being a false flag. We have no idea if it was if it was the U.S. in the CIA or if it was one of the we- rebel groups in so that area. if it was area, Russia or for whoever. Who, we, we have no idea who it yeah. is. But if you, you know, but of course, you know, we had to, you know, launch, what was it, 50-something Tomahawk Tomahawks. missiles to not destroy an airfield. That made, <laughs> Yeah, that made a lot of sense. But anyway, we back to We didn't even do any real, real damage to it, did we? No, we didn't. We destroyed, well, they say we destroyed a that airfield that, they la- they supposedly launched the planes out of, but like two days later they were flying airplanes out of there. So we proved that we have the capability, and we spent a crap ton of money doing it. Um, that's but it, but that's any- your dollars, folks. But anyway, so um, Tillerson said that um, Assad must go. That we're going to have a uh, uh, a presence in Syria into forever, um, which really is that's just money. That's, that's just, you know, just money. Money, and and that is American lives. Yep. Uh, for that, what? For, that, for really for what? Well, what, that, are, that, what are we gaining from that? What is the American people gonna, gonna well, be protected or an a, a a interest economically, fiscally? What we're just there just to be there. Well, that just uh, it keeps the the American empire going. That keeps the you know we've got this huge military. We've got all these troops, so we got to use gotta it. We got to use it. That's the the military industrial complex, if you will. Uh, does but, that exist? Yes, it does. <laughs> but. Um, uh, there's uh, some other news coming out that uh, we're going to be fighting a proxy war uh, with Iran and uh, Turkey in Syria because uh, t- uh, Turkey, who is one of our NATO allies, supposed NATO allies, has uh, said that uh, these rebel groups and um, these Kurdish people in Syria and in Iraq in that area are terrorists and that they must be stamped out. Well, Turkey is supposedly an ally of ours. And then um, these Kurdish fighters, these I think they're called the Free Syrian Army, are um, 
are people we funded, so they're allies as well. And they're flying, um, they're flying their jets out of Turkey is flying jets, I believe, out of an airstrip that we built, bombing our supposed um, that is <laughs> allies. Uh, well, doesn't that make doesn't any sense. Good. That doesn't look good at all. No, it doesn't make any sense. So it's really it, nothing has changed when it comes to foreign policy. Trump has changed virtually nothing. Mm-hmm. If anything, he's just doubled down on what Obama was doing. Yep. And there's nothing conservative about it. There's nothing, nothing good about it. Um, so, and I think the, the guy that wrote this article I'm reading from is that, um, Rex Tillerson's gone hundred percent full neocon and mm, Trump is, yep. is outset to, is out, is set to outset, uh, set is outset to out neocon the neocons when it comes to these types of issues. Even John McCain saying, whoa, 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 just, just, well, just cool it. I don't know. <laughs> cool it. I don't know if that's possible. I bet you he's anyway. just, there just Joe, I bet you he's just sitting there just going. But but anyway, invasion, yeah, regime change. My so, two favorite words. So that's that's that. Think about it like this: What regime change has the has the United States done, or has conducted that's that's been like, wow, that was, that was a great decision. Uh, zero. Yeah, Gaddafi. Yeah, yeah, that worked out really well. Yeah, uh, that's a yeah. We so we, they, we we were told you know we got to take out Saddam Hussein because he's just awful and terrible. Yeah. Uh, Saddam Hussein was not a good person. Uh, but Iraq was stable. There wasn't running. There wasn't rampant, you know, terrorism running through Iraq at the time when we invaded in two thousand three. But look at it now. Is it? You think the Iraqis are better off now than they but were two thousand three? But Joe, the the WMDs, Joe, the, the mass destruction. I know. Even even if he had those, which I don't think he did. Even if he had those, what was the rationale for us to go in anyway? Zero. I mean, yeah. just just because someone has you know a big bomb doesn't mean doesn't mean we have to go in and, and trample it out. Just because Saddam Hussein wasn't a good person to his people, that is not a reason for us to go in and cause more death and destruction. Yeah. Um, so, but we can we can talk about that another day. <laughs> um, so those are the big so, 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 those some those headlines. Are, those are the big headlines. The big news. Um, depressing. The government's back open. Um, mm, so, that's, uh, so you, is the post office closed when the government shuts down? See, the thing is, is that nothing really closes when the government shuts down. It's just all the things. It's, it's all like, political. It's, it's all political. So all it's all it of the state parks and stuff. It's like, oh, oh, you can't go to the Vietnam Memorial because the government closed. Folks, the Vietnam Memorial is, is a, a wall. wall. It's a wall. Same thing with, with the World War II Memorial. It's a freaking wall. It's really what it is. <laughs> it's like a little, they got a little gate around it. I'm like... <laughs> They're putting a gate around an open air memorial. That's just stupid. They do that just to say, well, look, look at the enemy, man. Yeah. Just to look at whoever, 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 whoever the political enemies. You, know, the you know, that's like that's like putting a gate around the National Mall. It's a bunch of grass. <laughs> it's really what it is. Grass and trees. Well, who's gonna mow it? It's winter. <laughs> <laughs> that grass is not growing anytime soon, everybody. <clears throat> okay, so the Standing Brothers podcast would like to introduce. Our first ever stupid moment of the week. Now, this is not going to be a concurring thing, so don't look for it next week, although it might happen next week. But we wanted to kind of tap into um, the, the, the trolling, if you will, of the social justice and of the liberal, progressive, regressive left. So that's what this segment is going to be for. It's going to be for just absolutely stupid, most retarded, idiotic, pointless articles or things that we come across on the Internet. Um, I got a quick question before I before we go to the next slide. I got a question for you, Joe. Okay. So, if you're designing a hair product ad, let's just say you're gonna, you know, you, people see my hair. I, I, I okay, a, okay. I have it up okay. in the is that right? So really? I, I will channel my inner Donald Draper. Okay. okay. So, if I have my hair and it's all nice, it's all spick and spam. Everyone says, Jacob, your hair looks wonderful. Mm-hmm. What is the best way to, to advertise that? Uh, okay. Let me think. Let me think. Mm. What would he do? Oh, uh, I know. Um. Put on a burqa. Why would you do that? You couldn't see my hair. But it would be great because it would be progressive, everybody. It'd be progressive. You think we're joking, everybody? Here it's we go. Real. L'Oreal released a commercial or an advertisement with a hijab wearing model to advertise their hair. The, Hub- the Huffington Post, which is the dumpster fire of the internet, which is an insult to dumpster fires. F- says finally a hijab wearing model will be featured in a mainstream hair ad for the first time. 
Do you know how stupid that is? Extremely. Whether or not your hair is on display does not affect how much you care about it. Um, yes, it does. If no one can see your hair, then you don't care about it. It's kind of the whole point. I wrote on Facebook about this, and I said, it would be like Olay or some other kind of makeup company saying, you know what? We're going to have a model wearing our, wearing our product and our makeup, but they're going to be wearing a Jason Voorhees hockey mask. Because we want diversity in all, in all types and shapes and characters. So we're going to have them wear a hockey mask to cover up all the makeup that we just are trying to advertise. Just like this. You have an expensive shampoo or whatever product you're using. Let's just cover it up with hair or with, with a hijab. You can tell that stuff like this, as stupid and as pointless as it is, is strictly politically driven because no one else in their right mind is sitting there in a marketing meeting say, oh, well, we got to figure out a new idea for a product. Now we got to we got to think outside the box. So the best way to show our product is to cover it up under a thick polyester veil. Do you think that ever happened? No. What probably, happened probably was not. well, is, it what happened, happened now. was is well, we've we've covered everybody else. Oh, uh, who who who, have, who haven't we covered yet? Oh, that's right, the Muslims. We got the Muslims. It's stupid. It's pointless. It should not exist. To the moment of the week, Joseph, do you have any thoughts on this? Uh, no, I think you covered it all. It's uh, it's stupid, and if if this weren't real life, you think it was a joke. Listen, the 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 Onion has to be fearing for their life because they're like. All of our articles that people laughed at that were once satire are now real. This could have been a Saturday Night Live skit 20 years ago or something like that. Introducing a new product, a new hair product. <laughs> completely covered up by a thick polyester veil. It's stupid. L'Oreal, you're stupid. Next slide. Trump troll. Okay, so um, Donald Trump, we talked about on the last show the um, his, his Twitter account. And for us, it was kind of a down it was kind of one of those things that was like, eh, I don't mind him having it. In fact, I want him to have his Twitter account because I think it's great. It's funny. But you got to be a little bit more sensible with your tweets. The amount of verbal diarrhea and stream of consciousness that yes. is on that Twitter account is boggles the mind. But in this, but in this case, it was, that, it was exactly correct. Yes. So over the Women's March, Trump had the most brilliant tweet, and I, I just, just got to give him a few, few, few claps for this. No, 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 no. The snaps. You don't want to trigger anybody. Yeah. Well, I heard that snaps actually trigger people now. Oh, so is it jazz hands? Yeah, you do jazz hands. Okay, jazz hands. This yes. is for all, all of our nine binaries yes. and for our people who identify as a bottle of ketchup. This, this tweet gets four jazz hands. Yes, those who identify as, as box fans, bottles of ketchup, and Fender Stratocasters, this one's for you. <laughs> Trump wrote on Twitter, beautiful weather all over our great country. A perfect day for all women to march. Get out there and celebrate the historic milestones of unprecedented economic success and wealth creation that has taken place over the last 12 months. Lowest female unemployment in 18 years. Perfect. That's exactly what he needs to have his Twitter account for. Because you know what happens is that whenever the, whenever the other side reads this, they just go... <laughs> they get so mad and so triggered they don't know <coughs> they don't know what to do with it. It's just it's perfect because you know what? It's true, but at the same time he's mocking them and they can't do anything about it. And that is what's absolutely beautiful about it. Yep. I just I think it's just fantastic. Brilliant, if you will. Really. I think it's just great. Yep. So that's 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 that is that is the Trump troll for the week as well. I think that's pretty much the show. It's that we had a short show. The last yeah. show went for like an hour and a half, and I said, we're "You know at, what? We're at like thirty-four minutes right now." You know now. what? We're not doing that that's long. That's a first for us. It's gonna be a short show, so you guys don't have to complain in the comments yeah. about it being well over. What's our longest show? Like what? Close to two hours? Something. Hour and forty-five minutes. That was stupid. Okay, um, onto onto our one for the road segment. You look at this picture on the screen. You're seeing three old guys. Who are those three old guys? Three well, Canadian. Well, old the three guys. Canadian old guys. I'm gonna tell you. Well. Over the weekend, um, okay, I'm going to start with this. Those who don't know, um, me and Joe are both really, really big music guys, and it, it's kind of been our thing is music. Um, we were never good at sports, never really good at art or acting. Really anything. <clears throat> really anything. We were just kind of just the rejects of the American society. But Two of the most uncoordinated people you ever meet. But we... Um, 
So, so we found our voice in music, and, and we, we really have, I mean, I've been playing guitar for, I don't know how many years, and bass for, for a while now, and starting out, didn't really listen to much, just listened to it, everyone on my friends listened to and stuff like that, but uh, I would say in 2011, I, I discovered a song, Fly By Night, by a band called Rush, and... Um, Wasn't that off of a commercial? It was a commercial, yeah. yeah it was a, a Volkswagen a, a, a commercial. Volkswagen commercial back in 2011. And I remember listening to it. My, my first time ever hearing about the band was in the School of Rock. Um, um, Jack Black's character is giving out CDs as homework to all the students, and he gives out 2112. <laughs> 2112 to the drummer and saying, listen to the drum solo, or listen to this, this part of this one song um, from, from Neil Peart, one of the great drummers of all time. And so first I was like, I was like, okay, cool, Neil Peart. So I looked him up. I was like, oh, he's a good drummer. I like that. Never really did anything with that. And then I remember listening to, or as Getty would say, yeah, he's okay. Yeah, he's okay. <laughs> and then I remember watching the commercial and listening to Fly By Night, and then saying, ooh, the drums are really interesting. I'll go on Spotify, listen to the song. Well, I mean, how could you not say, mention that voice too? I mean, <laughs> that that voice. Well, I'm getting there. Okay. And I, I remember listening to it and being like, wow, this is really really dumb. This is weird. It's. It's just, I, I haven't heard anything like it before. It sounds weird. It just sounds weird. It's just so different. And That voice is so high. That was my mentality for it for for countless weeks. And then I went back and listened to it again. I was like, ooh, okay. Again. Hmm. Getting better. Again. Getting better. And then somewhere. I think after the fourth or fifth time I listened to Fly By Night by Rush, I, uh, something, like, I was like, wow, there's something, there's something here. There's something that... Out of all the bands, I mean, I listened to pretty much everything at that point. Except know. country. We hate Except country. Except country. Country is an abomination. Yes. Die. I remember listening to it and saying there's something lyrically here, musically here, and vocally here that I've never heard in my entire life. The lyrics were just, they were completely just completely different. And I remember listening to the drums and the, the bass especially and being like, Wow. <laughs> I've never heard bass because usually most of the bass I heard was just was just eighth notes following the chords, and he was just yep. just all up and down the neck, and it was playing incredible a, yeah, to playing listen to. Playing a guitar lead and then <coughs> playing a rhythm like a guitar would. It was incredible to listen to, and I I remember the first time listening to to, 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 to moving pictures all the way through in twenty one twelve all the way through. So so why am I sort of fangirling out about 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 these three old Canadians named Rush? It's not Justin Bieber, Jacob. I'm well. Like, oh. Back in 2014, there was, there was the R40 tour, which was their 40th anniversary tour, which me and Joe were, were lucky enough to go to. That's and um, there was a lot of articles written about it, and you could sense in the crowd that, you know, these guys are 60 years old. You know, Getty can't sing like he once did in the 70s. Although he does st- still sounds good. He still sounds fantastic. Um, they're struggling to play. They're up, they're up there laboring for the first time that people have seen in a long time. And there was the sense that, yeah, this is going to be it. This is going to be the last last tour. So this will, be the, this will be the last record, Clockwork Angels, which was absolutely a masterpiece of an album. And, um, yeah, I just had the sense that I was like, this is it. And um, Alex Lifeson, who's, who's in the middle of this photo, is, is the guitar player for the band, um, said in an interview that they said they're basically done. They're, they have no plans to record or tour ever again. Instead, that the band is unofficially officially retired so uh, but that was my one more thing i just wanted to just uh just kind of fangirl out a second about the band and just kind of throw that out there it was one of those things when i read it that <clears throat> it was it was one of those things where you knew it was coming but it still kind of stings a little bit it's still like mm. you knew it was gonna happen you right eventually. here yeah it but i think that Rush is one of those bands that you can look back at any point of their career and be like, there's still so much to discover. There's still so much to see. I think they've released like 18 studio albums and insane like that. And from all different types of, of styling and genre, all the way from a um, early Led Zeppelin kind of bluesy sound to the to the 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 um, new wave progressive sounds and like hemispheres, moving pictures and um, um, Stuff like that, permanent waves, and then the synthesizer sounds like Grace Under Pressure and Hold Your Fire and Power Windows, and 
You know, they have like a like a jazzy funk kind of sound on Presto and on Roll the Bones. Yep. And then their new stuff is a more of a hard rock alternative kind of progressive sound, and that's with the Clock Rangers or um, Snakes and Arrows. <coughs> so they have a full range of of music that's so diverse and so honest and so true. And yeah, I think Test Test for Echo is probably one of their um, heaviest albums. If you want to listen to, I, I would say the most genuine, honest rock song. I would say there's two, Spirit of Radio and Limelight. If you listen to Limelight and then you know about, about Neil, especially who Neil, the pure, um, the drummer who wrote all the lyrics, um, it's just it's, it's a testament to, to his life as a, as a drummer and as a musician. And a lyricist. Too. And a lyricist, too. He wrote all, he wrote all the lyrics. Yeah, and um, Spirit of Radio, in my opinion, I think is, in my opinion, it's, it's the greatest rock song ever written. That's just that's just me. I, I, I'll get flack for that, but listen to it look at the lyrics and just just soak it in it's it's something incredible that that's hard to ever there never be another band like him because it was funny because i was on spotify and i was looking at bethel which is a which, 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 which is a uh, a, a worship band and did you know that bethel has like 17 members really yeah in the that band seems like a bit much that's ridiculous listen a band six people is all you need in a band okay you have two guitar players, singer, drummer, bassist, keyboard player. That's all you need. Six people. It, it's kind the of ab- mi- absolute, minimum. Absolute most, I would say. Yeah. I was sitting there thinking, I was like, hmm, 17 band members. Um, Rush has a big Rush has a bigger, more broad, diverse sound with three guys over 17 members in that band. And um, Alex Lifeson, who is the guitar player again, um, I would say it's probably, you could agree with me, they're probably the least talented can compare to Getty and Neil as far as overall ability at their instrument. Maybe. Because undoubtedly, definitively, Neil Peart is the greatest drummer who ever lived. Yeah. Getty Lee, definitively, best bass player who ever lived. Yes. Yeah. If you don't agree that they're the most, that they're the best, you also you have you to, don't you have to get you, you have to listen. To you them. have to recognize that they are the the most the the highest influencers, if you will. Yeah. Uh, every everybody likes to play the you know the drum fill from Tom Sawyer. Everybody you know likes to sing or play you know sing way up high and play way down low. I think low the only like reason Eddie. why if you if you if you look at a top ten list, I think the only reason why that Neil Peart might fall to second or third is because Keith Moon and John Bonham came before him. But if but if you look at ability and diversity, he blows those two out of the water when it comes to the ability p- of the p- plus the uh, uh, thing called consistency. Consistency. He plays uh, every song the same way, even songs that are you know thirty five years old. He plays the same mm-hmm. way today that he did then. Not every Perfect. drummer, not every drummer Perfect. can say that. Um, so, so if you put a Metrodome to Neil Peart, um, he would be right on the Metrodome. Yep. Just and it doesn't matter if you have. There's some songs they have multiple time changes, multiple key changes. It doesn't matter. He's just well, key changes really don't don't matter to drummers. But they, they can affect the mental because you yeah. hear different you hear different notes. Different. Um, yeah, I would say even Alex Lifeson, who's probably the least talented out of all of them, which is is really saying something because because in my opinion, he's a, he's a top ten guitar player in the yep. world. Common um, tones. I would say that uh, he's a better musician than all of some of the mainstream bands. You know, Christian, secular, combined. Um, it, it's I've, I've always said that 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 Neil Peart has more talent in his big toe than some bands have in their entire roster. Um, it's just incredible. It's sad. It's sad, but at the same time, you get to look back and now celebrate what they did, and say, you know, yes, it is over. But you know, Rush is one of those bands that that for so long, um, mainstream media and rock. Um, you know, newspapers and, and articles. Rolling and Stone. Rolling Stone um, pretty much shoved them away. You're not going to be able to do that anymore. Um, they, people, people know about Rush now, and there's going to be a new generation. They will not be ignored. There will be a new generation that, that's going to discover yeah. them and say, wow, um, they, the, the mainstream media was wrong about this band because they were ridiculed and run yeah. out, um, run out of town, and people, 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 the, everyone didn't like him. If, if you don't, just just go look at the album reviews from the mainstream compare like the mainstream to the customers or the the um or the listeners 
Um, and it's, you know, yeah. five stars from a listener and, like, you know, three stars from the Rolling yeah. Stone. Because, like, it doesn't sound mainstream enough. Yeah. I mean, if they're selling out every arena they go to mm-hmm. in every town, that's got to say something. Yep. And it kind of goes to a further point that uh, this is really kind of the, the death, if you will, of progressive rock. Because they were really yeah. one of the last progressive rock bands. Um, well, I think that, yes, still tours to some degree. Yes, but still, st- I mean, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of the end of an era, yeah. if you will. Mm-hmm. It is, yeah, and um, progressive music has been pretty much dead. I think it's only a couple of bands. I think Dream Theater and like Symphony X. And Symphony X is the only, the only, but they're not really. They're, they're more of the metal side. They're not more yeah. of like the the the, the um, classic Yes, which I think is probably the greatest progressive. I'd say you have the, the greatest c- c- progressive bands, which um, Yes is fantastic as well. You can and big influences of Rush. Um, if you don't believe me, just go listen to. Um, roundabout and I know I know roundabout's a meme but listen to the whole song it's it's fantastic yeah. once you get past the intro yeah <laughs> it's great it's, it's it's a great song yeah. um it's sad yep it's sad because it's it's a band that's meant so much to me I don't think there's ever, I don't think there's ever been one band that's really I would say ambulance probably second but just because like, I felt like I had a more personal connection because I met them a couple of times and got to talk to them um but never meeting any of these guys um, meant, you know, the world, mm-hmm. the musically, just oh, just how a, honest and how true. There's a good interview that Getty just did here recently with Dan Rather. Yes, called the big interview. The big it's interview. On yes. Access TV. Sometimes fantastic. They, that came they'll on. They'll show a rerun. Yeah, brilliant. Great interview. Yeah, and just it just goes to show just their, how they're just they didn't they didn't care about the fame. They just wanted to play music. Down they to wanted, earth. They wanted to play it for the fans. Yep. And that is really lost in in music today and I, I could go ranting about about modern music please don't about machines making modern music Ooh, but if that is familiar. not the most perfect prediction wasn't that from a spirit of radio wasn't it yes it yes was. okay so there's a lyric i'm almost done there's a lyric in spirit of radio and it's called it's called um, machines making modern music um can it still be on Just some, something like that i'm like top of my head i know the lyric but it's um, machines making modern music. And you know what's so funny is that today in pop music, machines make modern music. Yep. That's what's so funny about it is that you know back in the back in the early '80s, late '70s when they wrote Spirit of Radio, um, they pretty much predicted because um, if you don't know how modern music's made, it's basically all machines. It's all machine. It's all a computer that goes to the motions and um, spits out some kind of algorithm that's supposed to be catchy enough and um will have mass appeal it's supposed to be you know music yeah it's funny because i i was listening to i I think it was a demi lovato album which it it was self-inflicted pain people don't do it to yourself it's bad but i was looking at the one single off of it and do you know how many writers there were for one single i don't even want to know there were seven writers for one single and (coughs) it just goes to show that uh, modern music is fake. Yep. And oh, that and, could be and, a whole other video yeah. about. But it, it's actually quite prophetic because that, that came out in 1980, that song. Yeah, 1980. Yep. They probably wrote it in the late 70s. They probably wrote it in 79. Yep. They wrote that song. Yeah, Machines Making Modern Music. Um, Rush. And then I, I, got, I think I got a sticker right here, I think. I don't know. Yeah, you can see it. I got a sticker right there. We, we should get a Rush poster. I have one in my room. That's a great, that's a great idea. But I don't know. I kind of kind of like our posters. Maybe we get like a little rush. Maybe like, we can maybe we can change them out. Get like a little rush thing on top of the yeah maybe top of the keyboard. We we are rush fan girls, so yes, if we're talking about yep. it a lot. But yep. they uh they were definitely a big influence on me because I played the drums. <coughs> um, I also really like the psychedelic uh, progressive rock people. I like I like Pink Floyd. I think that I think that the one band though that can be so inspirational but yet so degrading at the same time. Um, because I remember when I first discovered, I remember listening to YYZ and um, saying to myself, yeah, I'll never be that good. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're, one of the, they're one of the bands that you can listen to and be inspired and yet totally devastated at the same time. <laughs> yep. Saying that, you know, you can be an astronaut. You can be a lawyer. You, you, can, you, can, you can travel to the depths of the ocean, but you'll never be Getty Lee. Yep. And that is a fact. Yep. That's it All right. for me. Um, let's see here. Okay. All right, my one more thing is, um, 
you guys know I like to read. I try to read as much as I can, and I've got a book for you. Oh, a book. Yes, it is called Nullification, or State Nullification. It's a book written by uh, Tom Woods, who uh, is a who has a, um, <clears throat> a PhD in history, so he knows a little bit about history. Just a... Uh, I might beat him in a trivia. I you think? think? I think I don't. Eh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. So what it is? It's um, it's a book about state nullification. Is the idea that states can and must re, uh, refuse to enforce unconstitutional federal laws. And uh, this idea came to us from the great uh, Thomas Jefferson, uh, who in um, the Kentucky Resolutions of 1798, uh, it was the first time the word nullification was used because it, at that time. Um, uh, the president had the, the Alien and Sedition Act, I think is what it was called, where it really it made it illegal for uh, you to criticize the government. So Thomas Jefferson said— That's called said, tyranny. Yeah. Thomas Jefferson said, we ain't having that, so we're going to nullify that. Mm -hmm. So that's basically the argument of it, and um, it's a good book to read. Um, if, you wanna, if you want kind of a summary of what the book's about, you can go to the, the Liberty Classroom. It's, that's his website. And you can read a little bit more about that. Yep, you can kind of get a summary. He gives you the argument. And um, no, it's not about slavery. It has nothing to do with slavery. Actually, it was used against slavery. Um, so it's got nothing to do with slavery. Yes, it's, it does. Don't, no. don't believe him. So that's my, that's my little more thing. It's a book for you guys to read. So, yeah. That's it's it. interesting to see that I talk about music and you talk about books. Well, you know, that's just that's where our priorities are. <laughs> I think I'm going to change these pops out every week. I think I'm going to change them out. I think it's a good idea. I think you should rotate the sodas, too. Oh, but I, I only have three sodas. Just, you know, where did Trump go? Did he fall? You pushed him off, remember? That's right. Because, Trump, it's all your fault the government shut down. Yep. But now the government's back open. Whatever. You're all good now. All right. Is that it? Do you have any further comments, Joseph? Concerns? No, we only we're at fifty-one minutes right now, folks. You're gonna get an folks. You're gonna get an early night in, so you can get, so yep. you can so you can go to bed early. Um. Well, I guess that's the show. Yep, that's it. All right, that's the show, everybody. Uh, this is episode fifteen of the Standing Brothers podcast. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and share this with your friends so they can. Live in our misery of our lives that exist right now. Yep. Um, watch out for the asteroids out there, everybody, because government's back open. So now you have some time to prepare and yep. run underground so you can eventually die of starvation because there's no food. And then come back up and see the desolate wasteland that is former Earth. Yep. Good to end it on a high note. But watch out for the zombies because they might eat you. Yep. Possible. I'm, Jacob, right. I'm Jacob Standridge. The Standing Brothers Podcast, recording live from, from Megalodon Studios, as always. You can follow me on Twitter at jstandridge underscore, and you can follow my, my co-host and brother at... At Joe Stanberg. That's right. You can follow him at Joe Stanberg. And, and, and I follow him, and you know, he writes some good stuff on there. So, yeah, yeah, like once a month. Yeah, so do you follow me on Twitter? Uh, probably not. Anyway, anyway, I wouldn't blame you, because I don't like anything on Twitter. I just, I, I just retweet like they do. So. All right. That's about it. All right. Uh, have a great weekend. Watch out for the zombies and the asteroids. And uh, God bless.